Hello, this is Gigi Degree, and today we're going to do our final wrap-up video for Modern Masters 2015. Now, I've got two announcements to make. The first one is that my previous video about Modern Masters 2015 was entirely accurate and glorious, but we'll go over that at the end. The other announcement is that I've upgraded the sound quality of my videos just now. So here is the new sound, of course. Here's the old sound that you're used to. And here's me back with the wonderful new sound. So I hope that you guys all appreciate that in your little earphones especially. Now let's talk first and foremost about the fetch lands. Now this is gonna have a little bit to do with finance. So let me go over some legal-ish type stuff. Uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not liable for any uh, losses, real or imaginary, that you come into by listening to me or considering my advice in any way. All right, so let's quickly talk about the fetches. So I looked at the fetches and I thought to myself, well, we have kind of a limited pool that we can compare this to because we have to compare it to product that was released in a limited release set. We can't look at things like the cons fetches because those were released in a standard set tons and tons of it was opened, and so that's gonna have a different effect on the market. So I wanted to find some cards that are a little bit comparable to the fetches, and here's what I came up with. Let's quickly go over what they're not going to do. So let's look at these two graphs of Vendillion Click and Tarmogoyf. Now both of them are cards that there were a pretty limited amount of, but then got reprinted. Now both of these cards also had something else going on with them. Now, Vendillion Click, what happened was after Splinter Twin was banned, then Blue just became like pretty darn bad and has just been bad for a while in Modern. You pretty much shouldn't be playing Blue unless it's like Blue and Infect. That isn't really doing all that Blue of a thing. And the other thing with Tarmogoyf is that it got reprinted twice. And not only did that happen, but we had Dredge really shaking up the format. So people had way more graveyard hate than they did in the past. And so that made Tarmogoyf weaker. And that caused the price to not necessarily rebound so easily. So we have these two cards that people were excited for the reprints. And those reprints really drove down the prices for various reasons. But they're not like the Zendikar fetches, which are way different. So I found two cards that are a lot more similar to the Zendikar fetches so that we can kind of decide how we might expect them to move. The first card is Noble Hierarch. It was printed basically once before and, you know, it's used in a lot, a lot, a lot of green decks. Anywhere where you might want, like, a mana elf, it's kind of hard to overlook Hierarch because of its awesome exalted ability and the fact that it doesn't just make green, it also makes white and blue. So it's a pretty darn good elf. Because of that, people really wanted to get their hands on them and they were quite expensive. After its reprint, it took about three months before it started really drifting back up and then people started seeing that it was rare again and then started saying to themselves, you know what, I remember this card being way more. And then it just suddenly went back to similar to its old price and you kind of get that kind of cliff thing that you always see in stupid magic card prices where things go from reasonable to pfft, unreasonable instantly. Now when we're looking at fetches, we want to catch them before they do the unreasonable part because that's why we were excited about the reprint in the first time. We don't want to hold on so long that we don't catch it. The other card that I expect to be a lot like the fetches, which are so ubiquitous, is Surgical Extraction. It's a card that any deck of any color can play in their sideboard in order to deal with graveyards. Because of its extreme versatility, instant speed interaction, it's a really fantastic card in Modern, and it will behave similarly to the fetches, which really will get picked up quickly. This one also took about three months before it started trending back upwards. Now, if we look at the fetches, I expect them to do something similar to these two cards, maybe spike back up after about three months or so. But I am not going to wait three months to buy them. If you look at these two graphs, two months out is still pretty reasonable. You're pretty close to the bottom and you don't want to be on the wrong side of a price spike. So I'm going to pick mine up about six to eight weeks after this set comes out. I'm not going to buy them you know, on the first week or anything. I think that that's 
unnecessary excitement. Now let's talk about the glorious accuracy of my previous video. Now, if you don't care at all about that, <laughs> just click off now. But if you want to hear my thoughts on the video, now that all the spoilers have come out, a lot of people think that, oh my gosh, Gigi Degree said such crazy wild things and he was totally wrong. Well, on the second half of that video, I outlined four ways that the set could actually be pretty great value. So those four ways, one of them was that they would have the Zendikar fetch lands in them. And my reasoning for that was that Zendikar fetch lands for an experienced player look awesome. Like you'd see them on the cover and you'd be like, sweet. But generally they don't like putting lands on the front of packs. So I said, you know, all that value could be in lands and therefore they're not on the front of the packs. And that's why it looks so bad on the outside. The other possibility that I said was that there was a there could be a bunch of value in the lower rarities and stuff like uncommon and common and that actually happened they printed a lot of sweet cards at common and uncommon they printed like for example path to exile they printed that green green red red thing that remakes the mana i can't remember the name of the darn thing and basically they put a lot of value in those commons and uncommons and are really going to bring the prices of those cards down so that was wonderful at well another Another thing that I said in that video that could happen. And the other thing that I said was that they could just have, just for some reason, very bad package fronts. And I said, you know, Wizards has been known to just make terrible decisions before. So this is just one of those things. So I'll give you three cards that they could have put on the front instead of what they chose. Now they put on the front of these packs, Grizzlebrand, Domri Raid, and Stoic Angel. Now what they could have put on the front of the packs is Liliana, Goblin Guide, and Linvala, which are basically, you know, same colors and everything, but just way better cards. And they're still not the Zendikar fetch lands, so you can use the characters on the front of the cards to get people excited. It just really makes no sense to me why they printed a set that actually turned out pretty great. And they were just like, we're just going to make it look really bad, though. Why? So anyway, that's my final wrap-up of Modern Masters 2015. Of course, you can like and subscribe and all that stuff. And as always, I'll see you next video.